Wrapping up our exploration of once-weekly basal insulin therapy is our final episode exploring their therapeutic potential. Join Dr. Athena phyllis Tsimikas for increasing options to improve outcomes, examining the role of once-weekly basal insulin formulations, and hear the efficacy and safety data for options in development. Access the full series and complete the post-test at peerview.com forward slash KNZ 860. What are the current once-weekly basal insulins under development? Two have now made it into phase three clinical studies. The first one is basal insulin FC, or more commonly known as BIF, and insulin Icodec. Basal insulin FC is a fusion protein that combines a single-chain variant of insulin with a human IgG FC domain and is currently in phase three studies of clinical development called the QUINT program. These studies are currently underway and should be reporting sometime in early 2024. Insulin Icodec is the once-weekly novel basal insulin analog that strongly but reversibly binds to albumin, and it is also in phase three of clinical development. All of these studies have now completed and have been reported and are in the early stages of publication with submission to the regulatory agencies for approval. What are the differences between these two once-weekly basal insulins that are in the furthest stages of studies? Icodec is an insulin molecule that has a fatty acid chain attached to it. You can see here that it is albumin-bound and forms an inactive depot, and this allows it to have a prolonged action and buffers against dose variations as it is continuously released from the albumin-bound depot. BIF, on the other hand, is an insulin receptor agonist, which combines a novel single-chain variant of insulin with the human IG2FC domain, thus the name basal insulin FC. It is this FC portion binding that prolongs the BIF activity. The pharmacologic profiles of these insulins demonstrate that they have a very long half-life at several doses that were tested and last a full week and can take three to four weeks to reach steady state with insulin Icodec with a slightly shorter time to steady state of three to four weeks, whereas BIF may take up to full six weeks to reach steady state. They are being tested in both insulin-naive patients with type 2 diabetes, as well as those that are insulin-treated with a switch to basal insulin or those on basal bolus and a switch to appropriate basal bolus using longer-acting or traditional insulin glargine U100 or insulin degludec in several of the studies. For the insulin Icodec program, this series of program is called the Onwards program, and once again, also being tested in insulin-naive patients with type 2 diabetes, as well as those that are insulin-treated, and one study looking at type 1 diabetes. One of the studies in the Onwards program is looking at insulin starts in a real-world setting uh, using a dosing guide and uh, having minimal requirements from the investigators or the physician in terms of guidance and using more of an automated approach to guide the patient in titration. That's the Onwards 5 study. For the loading dose, you might think about using the calculation of 10 times the dose. So instead of 10 units once daily, it would be 10 times 10 or 100 units once weekly as the one-time only loading dose, and then thereafter 70 units once a week. In the BIF studies, they initially were using milligram dosing. The current doses have been converted to a unit dose and have a similar approach of a loading dose for the first week and then continuing with just the ongoing dose thereafter. Titration occurs in a very similar manner to our daily titration. In daily titration, we might be increasing someone's dose from two to three units every two to three days based on a fasting blood sugar. In a similar manner, in the once weekly dosing, you're looking at usually two to three fasting glucoses just before the once weekly dosing. And if they are elevated, you would increase your titration dose by between 10 to 20 units. In the studies, they were using 20 units increases. If you are below your target, you would decrease the dose by 20 units. Similar dosing titration regimens are being used across both the study insulins at this time. <laughs> 
turning to the efficacy results for insulin-naive patients in the ICADEX studies, what we're seeing is overall a greater reduction in hemoglobin A1c compared to the comparator basal insulin, whether it was glargine or degludec used. In the BIF phase two studies, we don't have the phase three results yet. It's interesting because those studies were conducted using different targets, and so it's hard to do a direct comparison. But in all the arms, in all the studies conducted for phase two, the results showed a non-inferior difference in hemoglobin A1c lowering. All had significant lowering between baseline to completion of the study. It's always important to look at the safety parameters and more specifically hypoglycemic episodes within these studies. In the ICADEX studies with insulin-naive patients, if you look at the three different levels of hypoglycemia rates, the alert levels, the clinically significant, and the severe levels, in the alert levels, which is levels below 70 milligrams per deciliter, the rates of events were higher. In the ICADEC compared to the insulin glargine, when you look at clinically significant and severe, these rates were similar and the rates were overall very, very low. When you compare to what the American Diabetes Association recommends as guidelines for rates of hypoglycemia, the rates in all of the ICADEC series of studies fell below these recommendations. In both the BIF and the ONWARD studies, there were no other significant safety events that were noted between the groups of basal insulin daily versus once weekly. Looking at the efficacy in previously treated patients with basal insulin that made a switch to once weekly insulin ICADEC or once weekly BIF, in the ICADEC group, the lowering of hemoglobin A1c was significantly greater than insulin degludec. In the BIF group, there was a non-inferior difference with significant lowering, but no difference between the three groups that were tested. Looking at dose and weight changes in the population of patients that had been previously treated with basal bolus insulin, it's interesting to see that the group on insulin ICODEC overall had lower doses of insulin ICODEC once weekly used across the 26 weeks of the study. If you break this down into was this mostly due to changes in the basal or the bolus dose, what you can see is that the overall insulin ICODEC once weekly dose for the basal insulin was slightly higher over the course of the 26 weeks that was required. But in contrast, your bolus dose was lower. And this is what contributed to the overall lower dose of total insulin in the ICODEC group. In this study, they did have a significantly different lowering of hemoglobin A1c with improved lowering in the insulin ICODEC group. Looking at clinically significant rates of hypoglycemia for overall hypoglycemic events, the rates were higher in the insulin ICODEC group compared to insulin degludec. Although if you look at what the overall rate is at 0.73, this is less than one event per patient year event overall. In the BIF studies, if you look at safety, severe hypoglycemic episodes were similar between the two groups and no other adverse events were noted with differences between the degludec or the BIF groups. Looking specifically at safety in the basal bolus insulin group, so this is a group in which more advanced diabetes using both basal bolus insulin, what you see in the clinically significant level two overall hypoglycemic episodes. Here now you see similar episodes between the two groups, once weekly ICADEC as well as glargine U100. There were similar numbers of episodes of severe level three, and in the combined level two and level three, similar numbers of episodes between groups without any notable significant difference between the groups. Interestingly, if you look at how many people were able to achieve a glycated hemoglobin A1c at target of less than 7% without having an episode of level two or level three hypoglycemia, this was similar between the two groups. In this study, they did have significant results for insulin-naive patients. Looking at the summary of the onwards phase three clinical trials, whether they were insulin-naive or switches from 
insulin to basal or basal bolus resulted was greater hemoglobin A1C lowering in the insulin Icodec group compared to either insulin glargine or degludec. The hypoglycemia rates between groups in all these studies were very similar and somewhat higher in the basal bolus switch group overall, although not unexpected since this was the group that had diabetes for the longest period of time and was also using both rapid acting as well as basal insulin. In all the other groups, the hypoglycemia rates were extremely low with under one event per patient year of which is well below what is currently recommended as guidance in the American Diabetes Association current standards of care. The outcomes of the QUINT trial are not available yet, but should be available by the end of 2023 or early 2024 to be able to evaluate what their outcomes look like for both hemoglobin A1C efficacy as well as hypoglycemia. So what are just some of the practical considerations and what we can look forward to with once-weekly insulins from both BIF and ICODEC? We know that insulin ICODEC reduces A1C more effectively than insulin degludec does. We are still awaiting some of the answers around BIF and what its effect against glargine will be. Those studies are currently underway. We know that they have sufficiently long duration of action for the full week with a flat PD profile, very little variability between the days and the weeks. They allow true once-weekly dosing. And keep in mind that rapid glucose lowering might not be expected with initial doses because steady state can take anywhere between three to four weeks of dosing. It's important to remember that patients switching from a once daily to once weekly insulin might require an initial loading dose that is one and a half times what your calculated recommended starting dose is. This would only be for week one and would then continue thereafter with a regular dosing schedule. There might be a transient increase in blood glucoses during that time until you reach steady state, and you may need to use either a rapid-acting insulin in that time period or other approaches, medication approaches, until steady state is reached. Frequent adjustments to basal insulin might not be possible due to the longer time period to reach steady state. And you might need to use a loading dose in order to get someone up to and closer to steady state. This has been shown in the initial phase three clinical trials to be achievable and result in fewer episodes of transient glucose escape. Clinicians and patients will need to learn how to initiate and titrate once weekly insulin, how to manage the dose sizes, and how to manage concomitant preprandial insulin if needed in those time periods if there is some glucose escape. In the studies that we conducted, many of the patients that had been on previous insulin were very happy to use insulin only once weekly and were very accepting of the dose. You need to evaluate the potential for overtreatment while avoiding under titration. You want to be able to progress the dose and the titration enough to continue to manage the glucoses, but be able to follow for a period of one, two, or even three weeks over time to ensure that you don't need to increase any further and avoid hypoglycemic episodes. You need to address major challenges of adjusting once weekly insulin to manage potential hypoglycemic events that may arise from exercise, sick days, and surgeries. These types of studies have not been completely finished at this time, but overall, initial studies looking at exercise do show that there is not extended periods of time of hypoglycemia, and they can be addressed with the traditional use of carbohydrates when needed during the exercise if the blood sugars begin to drop a little bit low. Overall, if we look at these cases again and comparing the efficacy and safety of once weekly insulin compared with that of once daily insulin, from the studies that we have reported to date from phase three studies, we do know that insulin Icodec does reduce A1C more effectively than insulin Degludec. Still to be seen are the outcomes of the phase three studies for BIF and whether it will reduce A1C more effectively than Glargine or Degludec. We do know that insulin Icodec has a higher rate of hypoglycemic events compared to degludec. Although overall, if you look at the event, the total events, these are very low with less than one hypoglycemic event per patient year, which compares favorably to the recommendations of the American Diabetes Association. BIF has been seen in the current studies that have been reported to have an equivalent rate of hypoglycemic events compared to glargine. Thank you for listening.
download materials, and complete the post-test for instant credit at peerview.com forward slash KNZ 860. This activity is supported by an educational grant from Novo Nordisk Incorporated.